Hi. I think we have Yuang, of, uh, P the founder of uh, Elite Social Network, P1.CN. Please welcome him. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, uh, much as with my last interview, you were here a year ago. Yeah. And uh, you were talking, basically, th at that time, it seemed like the space uh, for elite social networking uh, was relatively immature in China. Uh, you basically said you had the space to yourself. Um, and you said the market was, at that time, about 50 million people, potential market. What uh, has changed in the last year? Have other folks come into this space, competitors, and is the, has the market grown, you know, how much has it grown in the last year, potential market? Um, we think the market is about 80 million right now, wow. and it's growing, uh, still growing very fast. And I think the estimate of uh, 50 million was quite uh, conservative last year, so it probably 60 million last year, so 80 million this year. And um, we've seen a lot of copycats coming up, but um, it's very hard for them to succeed because we started out in Beijing and Shanghai, and uh, those are basically the two cities you have to start with. And since we have a very high market penetration already in these two cities, it's very hard to start up uh, something similar. Okay. And what is, uh, uh, well, to, to explain quickly, I'm going to recap so that we don't have to go through all of this very, uh, in, in too great detail, but you have, you have tiers of service. You have the kind of premium and then VIP gold, VIP silver, and then a lower tier than that. Um, and people can get in and they can basically interact with their level and one above, right? Now, given that, what is your market penetration that you described in, in Beijing and Shanghai? What, what kind of numbers do you have? And if you could give us a little bit of idea of the breakdown of premium VIP. Oh. Yeah, um, basically um, in um, Beijing and Shanghai, we have, um, in Beijing, we have about half the market. And in Shanghai, we have about 30% of the market. And what do you define as the, the market, the size of the uh, market? It's the young affluent group um, who is um, the line for uh, aff the affluent people in China is uh, basically not very high since it's still a developing country. It's uh, 8,000 RMB in uh, monthly income, but that's still the top 5% uh, of the country, so to right. say. And, um, in Beijing, Shanghai tends to be a bit higher, of course. But, um, and in terms of age, it's basically people between 20 and 40. Um, um, and we're spreading out to um, tier two and tier three cities this year. How many people fit that definition in Beijing and Shanghai that you just described? In Beijing, about uh, one to 1 1.5 million. And in Shanghai, about two million people. So you have, between those two cities, uh, about one and a half million uh, or more We have about members? a million p people, uh, members within okay. Beijing and Shanghai. And okay. we have 1.2 basically in, uh, in total. So right. it's, um, uh, the other people are coming from the other cities. And what cities are you expanding to first? Uh, we, we have already expanded to uh, six cities. Uh, it's uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, uh, Chongqing, uh, Hangzhou, Qingdao and Dalian. Right. And uh, what is, can you give me an idea, how much does it cost to be at the most premium level and how much does it, just to give us a sort of a, an idea of what we're talking about here and to be just at the entry level between, what's the range that we're talking? Uh, it's a bit sensitive because um, that's not exactly how we really do it. But um, we have a VIP platinum, gold, silver, and normal members. And uh, we kind of handpick our uh, ambassadors uh, to uh, give them the power to refer the top two levels, the platinum and the gold levels. And basically, the uh, platinum members tend to be the people who are basically super wealthy. And people uh, in the gold segment are the senior professionals. So actually, uh, the gold members tend to be older than the uh, platinum members, since uh, many of them are uh, coming from the second generation. Do you find, is there, uh, obviously there's a whole, there's sort of a, you could end up having a Groucho issue in terms of, uh, you know, or a, a, a different twist on the old Groucho joke. You don't want to be a part of a, a club that would have other people as a, as a member. Do you find that there's, 
is there a level above which is there a is there a salary tier that you're finding it very difficult to to recruit from if it's in other words they consider themselves too rich to be too elite to be a part of any social net to be on an online social network no actually what's been seen is that um, the higher up you go the more active they are that's how it works on p1 and uh, it tends to grow by 30 40 percent in terms of activity so um, the top members are basically all m members who use it on a daily basis. So um, we don't see that as a problem. Because um, the higher up you go, the harder it is to find a service that's working as a social tool. And is the shape of your service a pyramid where th there are more people on the bottom tier and the fewest people on the top tier? Uh, yeah, of course. Th th that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean the core problem that uh, we're solving is um, to share your life basically right. in a trusted environment to your trusted circle of friends. And uh, this is something that they're not really doing in the other social networks. So this is pretty unique. And uh, one more question about membership and then I'll move on to kind of revenues and et cetera. <laughs> the, uh, what's the gender breakdown of your membership? Uh, we have more uh, girls, actually, and um, the female part is higher because we kind of collected our initial uh, seed member base through uh, our photographers. Uh, we uh, started out the two first years to, um, do, uh, to, to collect the seed members from offline. So we went to the highest uh, end um, uh, offline venues like the luxury shopping malls, the um, top nightclubs and uh, different premieres and openings. And we kind of sent out a lot of photographers and um, invited them to P1 to picture them and uh, send them an invitation. And this way you can make sure that everyone fits the target description. And uh, we actually collected several hundred thousands of members this way in the beginning. And nowadays it's growing more organically. But um, since it's easier to uh, spot, you know, um, female uh, potential members who uh, look the part, uh, we had a uh, majority of female members in, in the beginning, and I think that's uh, quite a good thing. Yeah. So luxury mall profiling, essentially. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, is there a different criteria you have for uh, in terms of how much you pay, what your income should be? Etc. Um, what you know, for a woman than for a man uh, in your no that, that's that's not how we do it basically what what we say is that you know um, we're targeting an entire group that's um, sophisticated cares about quality and uh, cares about you know a trusted circle of friends and also feel a certain a sense of uh, social responsibility this is the kind of core target members uh, that we're targeting. Okay. Well, this kind of uh, ties in with what I wanted to ask about next, which is uh, revenue possibilities. Yeah. Um, let's start with one that just occurs to me based on this. More women members than men, high income. It sounds like it could spin off uh, dating service possibilities, um, matchmaking or whatever that could be revenue generators. And there are other players in this space of kind of elite matchmaking um, where that can be quite uh, lucrative. Uh, is that something that you are doing? Is that, a, is that a piece of what you're doing or is that sort of uh, not kind of related to how you want to run your business? Um, I mean, the primary part of the business is providing a service, a social platform that really works for these people. And of course, dating is part of it. But it's uh, not, as, I, as we see it, you know, the core part of the business or the core part of the revenue model. Okay, so what, let's get to the core part of the revenue model then. What is it right now? Uh, it's actually a mix between uh, three parts. Um, one is uh, advertising, and within that, you know, the core part is uh, basically brand pages. So having a profile for each of the uh, luxury to, uh, you know, second tier brands, and uh, establishing themselves, collecting a fan base, and then uh, it's a combination of promotion and uh, CRM towards their fans. And they can also basically buy ads to uh, promote their fan pages to collect more fans. And on top of this, you can run uh, online and offline campaigns. So uh, offline campaigns tends to be events. Uh, 
and online campaigns are basically what they would usually do as mini sites before, but mini sites kind of suck. So uh, you can uh, create a lot of traffic from outside, but you can actually keep it uh, once you have a, a brand page uh, as a store, so to say. So um, on top of this, uh, they can also have uh, product catalogs to show off the products and uh, uh, which will be connected to uh, the third part, which is uh, e-commerce. So uh, the third part, that's how can we do advertising. And uh, we had some really example, uh, successful examples. So that's why revenues is re growing very fast right now. Uh, the first time, I think I mentioned this last year, the first time we did an event with Lamborghini, yes, we sent last year. Yeah, uh, 30 members and one bought a car. And um, we did an event for 42 Below, it's an Australian vodka brand, and we kind of fill up Upset House and beat their sales records by uh, 100%. Uh, but we also had a brand page for Hennessy, Hennessy's VSOP, and they collected, uh, I think at the time, about uh, 25,000 fans. And they organized two really big uh, events in Beijing and Shanghai called the Halo events. Uh, it was a concert with Sammy Chung and a lot of uh, artists and they want to connect their VSOP brand with uh, music lovers. So we actually sourced 3,000 people from these 25,000 fans into these events. So higher than 10% conversion rate from fans into off offline particip participation. Is this the same sort of revenue makeup model as you, you mentioned uh, last year, a European counterpart that had, I think, 2 million members, $2 million a day in uh, cash flow? Is that right? Uh, no, that's more the e-commerce part. Uh, e this is more um, the social uh, networking and a uh, brand interactivity part, so to say. Okay. So uh, that's the first part of the revenue model. The second part is that uh, this, we, we started running this end of last year, and we have a small group of people who runs uh, regular surveys on our members. And since we have quite a lot of members, uh, and you don't, you don't need a lot of samples to get a very... Um, uh, satisfying survey result. Uh, we tend to send out a few thousand survey uh, questionnaires to our members and we tend to get 200 to 500 samples as answers and you can actually set exactly the criteria of people you want to ask. So uh, if it's uh, gender, location, uh, age, um, industry, uh, social segmentation and their interests. And basically, you can ask them about anything, but we tend to do an industry at a time. So uh, we've done um, surveys on um, cosmetics, on uh, auto, on mobile phones, and the results are very, very interesting. And you can actually see you know, the buying behavior for certain tier two uh, uh, cities, uh, for people within a certain gender and age, what they think about a certain brand. And this is something I think that cannot really be done by anyone else. What, uh, what is your, you mentioned revenue growth is fast. What, what, what are we talking about like in the last year? What percentage growth? Uh, without going to exact numbers, we're growing at about 300 to 400% per year. So, uh, um, and uh, it's growing faster and faster actually. So uh, um, that's basically it. Um, and it's mostly off that, that top line you were talking about, brand advertising, uh, tie-ins with, with companies. Yeah, with surveys and uh, also the third part, which is uh, w w uh, last year I spoke about you know, uh, the private sales model of luxuries, the luxury goods, and we kind of expanded on that concept since then. So what we're doing is actually we're offering an online shopping mall. And if you are a... Um, uh, luxury e-commerce operator, you can open a store on P1. So uh, we'll basically charge you a retainer fee for having this store, and uh, we'll also charge you commission. Uh, there's tons of um, uh, different operators who want to start operating um, high-end e-commerce products, and um, it fits very well because we kind of are the only database to, to target. Now, uh, in terms of membership recruitment as you expand, uh, do you, what, what's your current rejection rate, let's say? I mean, I, unlike other social networks, uh, not just anyone can become a member. Uh, are there, uh, how, how many people come in trying to become a member that you, ha that you actually turn away? Uh, 
basically, we developed a new function to uh, automate the process of uh, qualifying members who want to apply. Before, uh, we had to manually go through all, all, all the applications and we had to turn out about 90% of them. But 90%, yeah. That's w uh, what happened when we did it manually. But what we're doing now is basically that um, we're uh, letting them uh, uh, show that they have uh, five friends on P1 already because we do have a very high coverage of Beijing and Shanghai at least. So um, they get to import the address books and if they have five friends, they get in automatically. If they do not, we'll actually ask them uh, if they want to uh, uh, send recommendations to the people they just imported. For example, you have three friends on P1, you need two more, but uh, you just imported like 150 people are interested in recommending them to P1. If two of them get in, you will also be able to get in. And a lot of people tend to do this. And uh, this was actually what con caused us small confusion uh, around Chinese New Year. This, this year we launched this function and everything just shut straight up. We had about 150% uh, growth per day. Uh, and uh, that was very scary and a lot of people complained about uh, spam emails. So we kind of like had to calm it down a little bit but it's growing extremely fast. And organic growth has uh, grown by about, the growth rate has grown about 10, uh, 10 times since a year ago and still growing. Yeah, so how many members did you have in Beijing and Shanghai a year ago? Uh, about half uh, the number, so it's grown about uh, 100%. Right. And so do you worry about dilution of your sort of, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a classic social network kind of issue. Uh, at some point, it becomes not so exclusive if you're going to scale up. Uh, no, I think our um, tiered segmentation strategy actually works pretty well. It means that, like I said, uh, whatever segment you are in, what you will see is basically, uh, uh, except for your friends, of course, your friends you always, always want to see, but except for your friends when you just want to you know, browse around the network, you will see people uh, within your segment, the segment slightly above. So you always sh get a feeling of exclusivity. Okay, and finally, let's project this out as a business for the future. Um, at what I take it, are you profitable yet? I take it not, but uh, maybe, um, maybe you are. <laughs> We could be profitable if we wanted to, uh, it, since revenue is growing very fast, but we actually want to uh, expand pretty aggressively. So uh, uh, that's the strategy for now. Uh, and the goals basically uh, is to uh, uh, reach uh, 20 million members uh, throughout China uh, in about uh, two to three years' time. How much money have you raised so far from, from VCs? this? Uh, we actually had a group of uh, private investors. Uh, I grew up in Sweden and um, it's uh, been a group of private investors from Europe basically has been uh, continuously uh, funding the operations. Can you, so we a, hadn't, can you give us a sense of how much that investment has been? Um, by now about uh, 10 million dollars. 10 million. And do you, are you anticipating going out to actually raise um, VC money? Uh, we have quite a lot of money uh, still and revenue is growing very fast so um, um, we don't really need it but in order to uh, accelerate the growth uh, that might be interesting and uh, since we can are still the only players uh, around and uh, we're starting to become you know the leading high-end media you know with the highest influence power of these people uh, uh, regionally in China. So uh, um, how do you say, it? the end result is uh, very lucrative. So I, I, th I think that, that might happen. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, we'll see where you are uh, a year from now. Thanks, thanks very much Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.